I'm Patrick Bailey with IQless.com. Today is May 31st, 2020. And in this video, I'll be doing a little glue testing, doing a simple test between super glue and nano glue. Okay, now most of you should know, or if you're new to me, new to my channel, I try to keep things simple. I'm kind of uh, aimed at, or want to aim at for the new users coming in, and especially homeschool is just one of the things I try to focus on. And um, I want things to be simple and easier, and things keep getting simpler and easier with 3D printing. And as part of that, I don't want to, I try to avoid certain things. Like I don't, I try to avoid doing complex settings in my uh, slicer. I try to avoid assembling things. I try to avoid a lot of tweaks with my 3D printers. I want to keep, keep things basic um, to show what you can do with basic settings. And with that usually means trying to find prints that are done better to handle basic settings and basic um, things. And I, that's what I aim for. Now, that also includes gluing. I try not to ever glue anything. And if there's a print that needs gluing, it's something I tend to avoid unless there's something so overwhelming about the print that is so neat that there's just no way you can't do gluing or it's just kind of cool and, you know, but for the most part, I just completely avoid it. Um, but recently I've had a couple things come up and the first thing that came up to inspire me to go get some gluing stuff was, uh, I did a video on this the other day, is the people at Rocket Pig Games, they do a lot of cool designs that they sell over my mini factory. And I bought this and have a couple videos printing this dragon out, which is really cool dragon. And they do a really good uh, job of printing it as one piece. So, but they also had a, had a version where they printed the head separate. And I don't know if this shows up really well, so if I put the head on here, this head is at such an angle that it does print just fine, but underneath the chin, it's a little bit of an angle, so that underneath the chin, when you print it as one piece, it's not quite as well done as you might like. So they have a version, this version, where you can print it in two pieces, and then you print the head a little more upright, and the chin looks a little better. And they do have a couple of designs, and actually I've bought a couple that I haven't had time to print, that are more designed to be much bigger pieces. And so in that case, you do need to print them in multiple pieces and then glue them together. So that kind of gave me an... Um, one of the things I'm like, well, this is probably worthwhile to give it a shot to do a little bit of gluing. Um, so with that, I bought some nano gloop. And so over here, um, I bought some nano gloop. You can go check out these gloop guys. They do a lot of interesting things. Um, there's a lot of stuff they, I don't know. They, they seem interesting, especially if you're doing stuff with like big glass plates. These There's a lot of applications for this thing that looks like it's pretty good. So I decided, okay, I'll go buy this to test it. It's a little pricey for what it is, but it might be worthwhile because in my case, five bucks, this is not bad for five bucks, but the shipping and handling is like 11 bucks. I think I spent a little over $16 to get it delivered, which is a little bit ridiculous, but for a test, eh, one-time deal, or, you know, the amount of glue in here, it's not much, but I don't, I'm not going to use a whole lot of glue over time the way I do things. And if this has a nice applicator and works well, then I'll call it good. You know, it's a little expensive for what my needs. But also, how does it compare to super glue? I'm not doing anything all that crazy, so maybe super glue is fine for me. Uh, but another thing that I also had a need for recently is my son, he made this thing. <laughs> he, he had me print out this in a bunch of parts, this really cool helmet. I'm not sure if I would do a video on it, but he did. I gave him the super glue and I gave him the nano glue and said, hey, you figure it out. And he super glued the whole thing together and it's been, you know, he still has some stuff he needs to putty it and whatnot, but the super glue worked fine for him. So that's another thing kind of inspired me to probably do some gluing. But for the most part, I don't want to glue. I'd rather have a design where I, it, there's something I can print in one piece or something if I have to do a bigger piece that I can mechanically attach it somehow, like screws and bolts that are mechanically, that are 3D printed too. Like, um, ah, well, there's a video I have to, I'll probably work on short term. I was making a doorstop for my mother-in-law where this piece is pretty tall, so I printed it in two pieces, but they screw together, so. There might be some more to come on that in a few weeks. So I try to avoid it. But but with this, I thought, okay, here's a good opportunity because this might come up from time to time. Let me go uh, design a print that's good for testing glue prints. And over here, if you see the 3D glue, hopefully I'm showing this animation on their website, they had this really cool handle test where they're sitting here and they can glue this thing together and you can see them trying to pull it apart. I was like, ah, oh, it's really cool. I could probably go design that in OpenSCAD and print it out. But then I saw something else and said, you know, that's a little bit big for a test print. It's really cool for a demo. So what I came up with uh, was this. It's over, over here on prusaprinters.org. You can go download this. It's 32037. Um, and I'll put a link in the show notes. So the idea was I could print these little pieces, and I got a couple of here. 
and then put a hole here, and then I can just get a dowel, and that way I can print a couple of them and just use a dowel and kind of pull them apart. And if I wanted to get more precise, I could put, you know, weights on them and try to pull them apart. Um, I'm not going to get that precise in this video. Uh, if you want some precision tests and things like that, the CNC kitchen, he does a lot of good things on, on that. Or if you want to do your own, you can go print some test samples. You can use this as, a, as, a, as one maybe, and you could pull them apart. Um, anyway, so there's that. But let me go sh show. So you can go there, download the samples, or you can download OpenSCAD to tweak it. Because what I did here is you can actually go change it. So here I have a height of 60. You can come in and change it to a height of 80 if you want something bigger. Uh, also, the dowel size that cut is cut out there. If you want it bigger or smaller, you can change it. Or you want a bigger diameter, you can change it. Just kind of that easy. So whatever test piece you might want, you can just easily tweak it. Now for this, I use the, the default settings that I have out there. And also I did a 50% infill to make it nice and strong. So, um, and then also I did another, where's my other piece? Where did I put it? Well, I'll show you here in a second. I have another piece that I designed where these can kind of uh, hold together. So, well, uh, I can show on here. Here, there's a little yellow piece that I printed out and I'll show that I put an open SCAD too that exactly holds these together and kind of goes in the slot. Which is another interesting thing, because we're 3D printing, if you did need to glue something together, you could somehow open SCAD or something else, design a jig. You could design a jig where if you have something, you know, it's not going to work very well with a, a dragon. But if you had something mechanical that you knew the precision measures of it and you wanted to glue it together, you could make a jig and stick it together. So anyway, most of this, is, most of this video is about, hey, I made test samples, go use them, do your own thing. But for now, let's go run a couple of tests. Okay, now you can see my jig now that I found it. So this is all designed open SCAD too. And just an interesting idea, if you have something you need to glue that is a precise thing, then you could probably make some kind of jig. So what I've got here is I've got some gel super glue that I might try in a bit, and just regular super glue, which is what I'm gonna try now, and this nano gloop. But the nano gloop, uh, if you look up their stuff, uh, it's per material, so this is just for PLA, and this will say PLA on it. And it's also only good for so many months, so yeah, I don't know. So what I'll do here is, uh, and also this this should more make the piece one, bold at a molecular level, whatever. You just have to read their press, what they say about themselves. Okay, so I'm going to rough the sides up so they get a little better adhesion to each other. And then, clean that off, and we'll try some super glue first. So I just got a fresh thing of super glue here. Not that fresh matters. Oh. Okay, then I'll put a little bit in the center here. I don't make it too big, so if you can see that. And then we will stick them together. But I will stick them in the jig here so I can kind of get them a little precise next to each other. Then I got a little clamp. So I'm going to squeeze them tight. And they come out of the jig. And I'm going to leave them for about 15 minutes. And then let me do the same thing for the nano glue. thing I like about this, you got a little applicator. So that might be a winner in my mind because I don't use glue much. And if I do, it's nice to have a little precision. So this might be something I like better for the dragon because I can sit there and put it right where it needs to go. Ooh, that's got a little bit of odor to it. Okay, so I'll kind of stick them, put them on there, get them together real quick. Ooh, oh, yeah. You got a smell going on on that one. You might want to do this in a well-ventilated th place like a garage. Oh, there we go. So, cool. So I'll stick this guy over here. And I'll put a timer on for 15 minutes. Or just reset it because I pushed the wrong button. Okay, 15 minutes. 
yeah, there we go, 15 minutes, and then we'll come out and check them. And in fact, I should probably just prop them up a little bit, just in case anything drips through. I don't want them getting stuck to the table, right? So we'll go back and put the PLA over here, right? Put the super glue over here. And then we'll come back and just uh, in 15 minutes and see if they come apart. Now, this is gonna be a little bit of an informal test. I'm not gonna put weights on them and all that stuff. You know, you guys can do that yourselves. You can download these and do some of your own tests, but I'll do some good pull tests just by my own strength and see what I can do or maybe get my son out here too and see if we can break it. But there we go, give it 15 minutes. Okay, so I went and reread some instructions because it's been a little while since I looked at them. So we might not be at a quite fair test here, but I'll still do this and I'll do another test. So uh, super glue, you know, it, it gets tight pretty quick, but they talk about having a 24 hour period for a full strength. And the glue, they say 15 minutes to get it nice and tacky and half an hour to get full strength. So after I, I'm gonna do a little, you know, it's been 15 minutes plus a few. So we'll see how these do, but also I'm gonna go redo them again and just let them set for an hour. And so we'll see, unless, unless these are fine, we'll, we'll see, but um, let's see. So here's the super glue. So we've only been 15 minutes, so. Okay, just a simple, just wanna make sure they don't torque apart. That's good, okay. Now. Oh, I can feel it coming apart. Okay. But that's only 15 minutes, so I was able to pull that apart. So we'll, we'll definitely test this again. Okay, now this guy, which I feel will probably have the same thing happen because it's only been 15 minutes, right? Well, this feels stronger right here. But I bet you I'll take this apart too because it's only been 15 minutes. So let's see how... Well, stronger. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Ah. <sighs> okay. I'll give him some points for that. Okay, so I'm going to set this one aside. I'll put this guy over here. I'll just let him sit there for a minute. Um, and I'll kind of consider his, he's tainted my mind because I fiddle with him. Let me leave these guys broken. And let me go do another one with super glue and another one with um, the 3D glue. And we'll let them sit about an hour. In fact, I'm, well, yeah, let's let them sit about an hour. Okay. Well, I just had a video recording glitch. Uh, I was recording my video, but my audio kind of cut out. So um, what I had done is, I, these have been here for an hour. And we just took these apart. Now this one is the one we glued with the uh, super glue. And as I tried to pull it apart myself, I could kind of feel it coming apart. But then my son and I, and I could probably overlay the video here because we did video record it, uh, it broke here. So that's kind of a good sign, but I could feel it kind of coming apart there at the center too. So that's the super glue after an hour. We had a physical break. Um, but then we took this one, which is done with the super, with the uh, 3D glue, after an hour. Oh, and also I did take the one I originally did, took it downstairs to my son, and we tried to take it apart, and it did not come apart. So here I'll do this again, I'll repeat. Ah, it's on there. And we'll repeat our craziness. <coughs> Where my son will help me here. We'll try not to hurt ourselves. But <laughs> Okay, I don't want to, so, the wood. or break the wood or break my hand, but, or break my son, uh, or break me, more likely. So, that is good, and let me check my audio to make sure I'm still recording, yay. Um, now, before I did this video, what I assumed, I assumed that even beyond the hype, I thought this the end results would be similar to the super glue, but that this would just be more convenient. It's like a more convenient applicator. So I thought I'd probably like this in the end, but I figured the results would be somewhat similar. But after doing a couple of tests, man, the 3D glue does hold better. So it has done a really good job the way that it works. So I am sold on it. I think it's good. Um, and also to mention this, because it came up in another video, 
The 3D Gloop people did not sponsor me to make this video. In fact, I gave them money for this 3D Gloop. And why would they give me money? Because <laughs> I am a small little channel. And I appreciate everyone watching, and I have a lot of fun doing this. Um, but I'm a tiny little channel compared to anyone else. Now, I don't fault anybody, like uh, the 3D Printing Nerd or anybody like that, if they want to do a sponsorship by somebody. As long as they disclose it, fine. And if they do sponsorships with companies they trust and that you guys trust, then fantastic. But I'm always going to be of the opinion, try to, you know, if I ever do partner with someone, and I'm far from that, that I'd only partner with people I trust. So I'd partner with people that, you know, that make good stuff. And if they stop making good stuff, like right now, um, I do a lot of stuff with Prusa printers because I like the Prusa printers. I give him money. Um, and at some point, if Prusa printers all of a sudden start making bad printers and someone else makes a better one, I really got no problem switching because I want to give, I'm kind of trying to pursue the best things for what I like and what my channel is about. So anyway, that came up recently on another channel that someone was accusing me of getting sponsored, to which I have to say, why would you sponsor somebody who's only got a couple of thousand subscribers, which I thank you all for subscribing. It's a lot of fun, but um, there's a lot of other people who have bigger audiences you could pay to show off your stuff. But anyway, um, there's that. Uh, the 3D Gloop guys have sold me, so I need to go glue some dragons together now. Anyone else out there have any experiences, positive or negative, with the 3D Gloop? If so, post some comments. I'm interested to see what some other people have to say about it. Uh, my experience is good, but yours may not be, or yours may be good. I'd like to see that either reinforced or countermanded, so uh, post your comments if you've used it. On another note, next video I think I'll be working on is showing how to design a weighted door stop in Fusion 360 that looks like a wine bottle, or at least a wine bottle shape, since I recently made one for my mother-in-law.